Hello, I'm Professor Matthias Göbler, the Director of the Department of Dermatology, Virology and Allergology at the University Hospital Würzburg in Würzburg, Germany. I've been involved in clinical trials of Fkatigimod for the past two and a half years, and I'm looking forward to discussing the results of our phase two trial evaluating Fkatigimod in patients with pemphigus vulgaris and pemphigus foliaceus. Pemphigus is a group of rare autoimmune blistering skin disorders that includes pemphigus vulgaris, PV, and pemphigus foliaceus, PF, and is characterized by the development of pathogenic IgG autoantibodies against desmoglein 3 or DSG3 and DSG1. Pemphigus is potentially life-threatening, primarily due to secondary infections, and there's a need for a fast-acting treatment that will permit early corticosteroid tapering. Fkatigimod is an inhibitor of FCRN, the neonatal FC receptor, which is responsible for maintaining constant levels of IgG and albumin. Fkatigimod is an engineered FC fragment derived from human IgG1, specifically developed for increased affinity to FCRN. Fkatigimod binds to the IgG binding site of FCRN, occupying receptors that would typically recycle endogenous IgG or autoantibodies, and instead promotes lysosomal degradation of IgG. Fkatigimod thereby reduces the levels of circulating IgG without affecting levels of albumin or other immunoglobulins. Since autoantibodies play a central role in the pathophysiology of pemphigus, approaches that target autoantibodies are especially attractive, which in turn led us to investigate the safety and efficacy of Fkatigimod in patients with pemphigus vulgaris and pemphigus foliaceus. The current study was an open-label phase two adaptive trial. Patients with newly diagnosed or relapsing mild to moderate PV or PF were treated with Fkatigimod dosed as 10 or 25 milligram per kilogram intravenously, dosed once a week for four weeks or weekly until end of consolidation during the induction phase. An independent data monitoring committee made recommendations on the maintenance phase based on the preceding cohort efficacy and safety outcomes, which varied in terms of frequency of administration, duration of phase, dose received, and concomitant and rescue treatment. The primary outcome was safety, with key secondary endpoints including pharmacodynamic analysis, the Pemphigus Disease Area Index, or PDAI, time to disease control, time to relapse, and time to complete clinical remission. Looking first at safety, adverse events were mostly mild and reported by 16 of the 19 patients receiving Fkatigimod 10 mg per kilogram and by 13 of the 15 patients receiving the 25 mg per kilogram dose. Adverse event rates and profiles were similar between those groups. Two serious adverse events were reported, pneumonia and tibial fracture, neither of which were considered treatment related. The most common adverse events were nasopharyngitis, diarrhea, and headache. No clinical significant changes in vital signs or clinical laboratory assessments were observed. Albumin was modestly and transiently increased within normal range, and total serum cholesterol and low-density lipoprotein levels remained within normal limits in the 11 patients measured from cohort 4. Let's now look at efficacy. At the end of the induction phase, PDAI activity scores decreased by a median of 75% in cohorts 1 through 3. Among patients who completed the study, those from cohort 3 had a median reduction of 78%. At the end of the induction phase for cohort 4, PDAI activity scores decreased by a median of 52%, with a median reduction of more than 99% at the end of the study. Disease control endpoints also substantially improved with Fkatigimod. 90% of all patients experience disease control after median of 17 days, 
In cohorts three and four, 64% of patients achieved a complete clinical remission after a medium time of 92 days on maintenance therapy, consisting of efcatigimod plus prednisone 0.26 mg per kilogram. 39% of patients who achieved disease control relapsed with medium time to first relapse of 211 days. 73% of patients in cohort four reached end of consolidation after medium time of 43 days. After the first infusion, serum IgG decreased by 40 to 45%. On day 29, the median reduction in IgG levels was 62% in the 10 mg per kilogram group and 66% in the 25 mg per kilogram group. Patients in cohort 4 had a sustained IgG level reduction of approximately 50% to 60% for as long as biweekly infusions were maintained. Serum levels of anti-DSG1 and anti-DSG3 IgG also decreased over time, reaching a median 61% reduction from baseline for anti-DSG1 antibodies and 49% for anti-DSG3 antibodies at the end of the induction phase. Importantly, the suppression of anti-DSG1 and 3 antibodies were maintained at the end of the treatment-free follow-up, with a median reduction from baseline of 70% for anti-DSG1 IgG and 42% for anti-DSG3 IgG. This study is important because it shows that efratigimod was well tolerated in patients with pemphigus, consistent with previous studies in other indications. Owing to its strong safety profile and early onset of F action, efratigimod appears to be a promising first-line treatment or add-on to prednisone in patients with pemphigus. Results of the ongoing phase three trial, the ARREST trial, will further enhance our understanding of the efficacy and safety of efcatigimod in this patient population. Thank you for your time regarding this subject today.